Now that I've officially beaten the game, uh, the opportunity to address many of the questions that have arisen due to the inception of this game presents itself. And there are many, many questions. Of course, I want to offer a perspective, a review, if you will, of the game after having beaten it. But what I want to talk about in this particular video is Red Lyrium, the first blight, its relationship to the blight, and the whole, well, essentially, the, the, the plot line of the game itself. Now, these are only partly my ideas because much of this came about due to a discussion I had with someone who I consider a, uh, an expert in matters of Dragon Age lore, pays attention to minute details. In addition to that, he has a PhD in neuroscience. That may or may not be related. I guess we can never know. But the theory and the, 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 the name, the appellation for this idea that is mine is what I call the Red Lyrium Theory of First Cause. Now, Red Lyrium, from the visual aspects of the game to some of the explanations offered to what it does in the game, is obviously incredibly important. And so what this theory essentially does, it unifies many of the events in the game with some of uh, the most plausible possibilities of how this all came to be. How was the Fade breached in the physical form? Uh, how did the Blight come about? How did the Darkspawn come about? What is Red Lyrium, etc.? <clears throat> well, we know that something happened involving Magisters and the Fade. Uh, according to the Chantry accounts, they uh, breached the Fade in physical form and violated the Golden City and it became black and dead whispers and blah, 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 blah. Uh, I think for the purposes of actual discussion in terms of what happened, <clears throat> no matter how much Mother Giselle might protest, metaphor is fairly useless. The only thing, only useful bit from the Chantry account is we, we know the Magisters uh, pierce the Fade. Uh, Corypheus uh, says as much himself. He says, you know, we breached the Fade, I looked at the Black City, and it was dead whispers, and so on and so forth. That's not the aspect I want to concentrate on. How did he do it? How did the Blight arise from this? Now, according to the Chantry account, of course, the Blight arose from this because they violated the Maker's will, and he cursed all the world with the Blight and punished the blah, 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 and not very interesting, uh, at least not very plausible. What's more plausible? Well, we know that Corypheus is connected to the Blight. We know that Corypheus is effectively immortal. He can possess Darkspawn, Grey Warden bodies and simply regenerate himself. That is, after all, probably the reason why the Grey Wardens imprisoned him in the first place, number one, and two, why he was not uh, able to be killed by Hawk in Dragon Age 2, hence the mystery is how he, of how he survived. Not too dissimilar to an Archdemon. But, but, there's more. Uh, this wasn't officially uh, illustrated, and I mean the literal sense in Dragon Age 2, but we see that red lyrium crystals are clearly growing out of his body. If you have a conversation with the Grey Warden, in my case it was Loghain, he mentions that uh, at some point in time, Corypheus was a mortal man, and then he transcended and became something else. Um, the Blight, however, he says, does not own Corypheus. I'm going to advocate the idea that Corypheus owns the Blight. What does this mean? So what is the Blight? What is the source of the Blight? Well, um, Varric's uh, pseudo-girlfriend, I can't stand her, more on her later, Bianca, mentions that you know, Red Lyrium has the Blight, but what does that even mean? Let's return to the past. Dragon Age 2, we recall that Varric, along with Hawk, discovered this ancient, uh, use the German term, Urite, uh, prehistoric almost tig that wasn't even recognizable as being dwarven, filled with red lyrium. That's how they got the red lyrium idol, how all the red lyrium got out there in the first place onto the surface, at least the red lyrium that we know about. Now think ancient, that is far more ancient than Tevinter. <clears throat> Tevinter, this, the events that supposedly occurred according to the Cant Chantry roughly 1,400 years ago, that's not that long ago compared to what we conceive of, of a taig when the taig is referred to as being far more ancient than anything dwarven, any, any dwarven taig. 
you know, predating the empire probably. So we also see that Corypheus has you know, red lyrium growing out of him. Uh, Dagna mentions, uh, rather, Bianca mentions that red lyrium is somehow alive. It has the blight. But what does that really mean? I'm going to argue here that, in fact, uh, it's not that red lyrium has the blight, but it is the source of the blight. What are some connections here, or rather some connectors? Well, one, we know that people who are exposed to red lyrium begin hearing singing and voices. Well, what happens to Grey Wardens with the calling? They hear voices. Dark spawn, spawn hear a voices that are uh, almost irresistible, that force them to seek out archdemons. The exact reason as to why, sorry, old gods, they seek out the old gods is not known, and I'm not going to cover that here. I don't really know the reason, but it's not relevant to the current theory. But we know at least that they hear these voices that force them to seek out, in this case, the archdemon. Uh, Grey Wardens hear the calling eventually uh, when the Blight, a.k.a. the Red Lyrium, that is, I believe, the ultimate source of the Blight, um, corrupts them. And even if they're not, even if you're not a Grey Warden or a Darkspawn, you hear that crazy singing, the voices. So there's something about Red Lyrium that's going on. It may be alive, it may not be. It, it, it's something other, it's, an, it's an, in the, the other category. But all of this can't just be a coincidence. Red lyrium causes people to hear things. Uh, the blight causes uh, gray wardens to hear a calling, causes darkspawn being essentially the blight themselves of, of the or of the blight uh, are compelled. They hear voices. So there's something going on there. I'm going to posit that red lyrium is in fact the source of all of this based on the fact that we know it's incredibly ancient. This taig that Varric discovered with Hawk back in the day, it, it, was, it, it went way, way back. It wasn't identifiable as, as being dwarven, right? And the Red Lyrium drove his brother crazy, and we, we saw what happened with Commander Meredith. But if you look at the corruption of the Templars with the Red Lyrium, it's not too dissimilar to some of the disfigurement you would see if you were to compare normal human beings to the kind of humanoid-esque forms of the Darkspawn. Now, I don't want to get too much in the detail of the Darkspawn. I want to really focus on this Red Lyrium first cause theory. Uh, so it's the same kind of corruption. We also know that Corypheus is not owned by the Blight, but he's very much connected to it, and he has Red Lyrium growing out of him. He can cause Grey Wardens to hear the calling. How does he do that? Well, is Red Lyrium part of him? That might be a good explanation. Okay. Now, we have the account of you know, cracking the Fade. How do you crack the Fade in physical form? Well, we know uh, in Dragon Age Origins, if you remember the particular situation, in, well, first the harrowing, right? You need regular lyrium. I don't want to talk about regular lyrium, but you do need some form of lyrium in the, for the harrowing if you're in the, circle, in the circle to pass the harrowing, you need to enter. And that's only in a dream state. Also in Redcliffe, if you want to uh, save Connor from possession, uh, you can either uh, go get a circle mage, um, and or go to the circle rather and get lyrium, or you can perform use blood magic, and then via blood magic enter the fade. But this is all just in in spirit form, in dream form. Imagine the amount of power, the amount of fuel, if you will, that would be required to crack the fade in physical form, physically entering the fade. Something that apparently only the magisters have done and, uh, as we know, the Herald, or the, the Inquisitor. You would require immense power. Now, as loony as Red Lyrium makes you, uh, it, it also gives you immense power. There's no doubt, it seems at least, that the fact that Red Lyrium growing out of Corypheus lends him some of this power. It's, it's part of him. And if for simply spiritually, uh, in a dreamlike state, entering the Fade, you require lyrium and or blood sacrifice. You probably needed an incredible amount of blood sacrifice and an incredible amount of lyrium, in this case, red lyrium, uh, to, to pierce the Fade in physical form. Now, we listen to Bianca's account about Lorias, the so-called mage who wasn't a mage, Grey Warden, and and how he was very interested in helping the research. There was almost something uh, purposeful about Lorias's, from just the way De Bianca told it, Lorias's interest, i.e. Corypheus's interest in red lyrium. I don't think it was just random that, red, that Corypheus found the red lyrium 
and all of a sudden, uh, boom, uh, he's interested in Red Lyrium. The very fact that Red Lyrium is growing out of him, uh, growing out of him is an illusion, is, is at least a suggestion that he'd been well acquainted with it for a long time. It obviously predates his existence, if it's as ancient as, as the Tige is claimed to be, that, uh, the, once again, the Tide that Varric and Hawk had found together. And we know, based on the rituals, that an incredible amount of power is required vis-a-vis -vis lyrium or blood sacrifice to enter the fade in a spiritual dream form, let alone physical form. Uh, the amount that would be required is incredible. And red lyrium, I would see, based on we, we, Corypheus' form alone, probably was part of it. Uh, he probably was, it probably was instrumental in, in entering the fade in physical form. I'm actually talking about the process here, not the, the mythology behind here, uh, behind it all. Uh, once, once he was in the fade, who knows what happened. I'm not going to speculate here as to what happened there. That's the subject of a different video, if at all. But in terms of the first cause theory, I do think uh, the red lyrium is the first cause. It's not that it has the blight. It seems to, to cause the blight. It seems to be linked to the blight. Uh, that Corypheus is somehow almost a master of the blight. Many of the things he does, right, his ability to control the minds uh, or at least man mimic the calling, his ability to re regenerate from, from nothingness, essentially, vis-a-vis -vis Darkspawn or Spawn or Grey Wardens, uh, it's very much reminiscent of, an, of a, a blight-infected old god, i.e. Archdemon. And this is all... Very, very indicative that of the of distinct possibility and indeed likelihood that that red lyrium is the first cause of of all of this stuff. We see how it infects the Templars. We see it growing out of Corypheus. Uh, we know that lyrium is required to power magic and particularly to enter the fade even in a dreamlike state. How much power would have been required to actually pierce the fade? I mean. One thing seems factually absolutely correct. He says it himself. You know, he, he, he entered the fade in physical form. The question is how he did it. We need to know the mechanics of that. I posit uh, the result of this discussion I had. I posit the idea that this was done vis-a-vis -vis ma probably massive blood sacrifice, i.e. blood magic, but also a massive amount of red lyrium. Now, after this, after this occurred, what has been called as the, the punishment of the maker, probably somehow involved a, a massive magical miscalculation or <clears throat> more likely simply a bleed, a, a, bleed, a bleed off effect or rather a bleeding on effect of the red lyrian. The amount of red lyrian that was used, uh, we know how, how poison it can, poisonous it can be even with limited exposure, think about the copious amounts that were probably used to enact some ritual or magical procedure to actually physically enter the fade. That amount of lyrium uh, probably led to disastrous consequences. It probably led to the creation of something uh, akin to the darkspawn. Uh, all, hence, also Corypheus' uh, connection, Corypheus' connection to the darkspawn and being, quote-unquote, being a darkspawn. He is perhaps the first, or one of the first Darkspawn, not because the Maker cursed him, but because of his almost, essentially his conjoining, his conjunction uh, with the uh, Red Lyrium. It's growing out of him, it's part of him, and he possesses immense power. In the game, when it's referenced that the, so much of his power comes from the Blight itself, I posit that that simply says, they're saying that much of his power comes from Red Lyrium. So red lyrium seems to be the connector for all of this, based on observations made in the game. Can Bioware retcon all of this and change all of this? Yeah, of course. I'm trying to explain things along rational lines and come up with something that's uh, plausible, uh, that somehow makes sense, uh, given what we know, what we can observe, and what we've seen. Uh, now, there are a lot of other questions I don't want to try to answer here. What exactly was in the Black City? Why, why uh, being physically in the Fade would somehow grant him godhood? Uh, what exactly the orb that uh, Solus, aka Fen, Fen Harel, gave him was, does, did? 
Uh, many questions. I mean, we don't even really have a good definition of godhood. That's a subject of a separate video or for a separate video. But I think the red lyrium theory of first cause, it's linked to the blight. Uh, it's almost, to my mind, almost certain uh, use in breaching the fade in that pseudo-historical account offered by the Chantry. I mean, they, the magisters needed something to power their spells. And as well, in addition to blood sacrifice, red lyrium seems a very convenient culprit uh, or aid in this matter. So anyway, this is, uh, you know, please post comments. I'd be interested to see what you have to think about this uh, theory. But right now, all we have to go on is theories. And, and the final point, some things will never be revealed to us. And so we're left to speculate. And yes, this is, I believe, informed speculation, but it is informed. Uh, and I, by the way, I do not buy into the architect was a magister theory, but that is once again, before I overshoot my time limits here, I'll leave that for another, uh, video. Thanks for watching. As always, uh, please leave your input in the comment section. This should make for some lively discussion. And as always, may the gods, whoever they may be, watch over you. Bye-bye.